Hello, my name is Todd Dust, and I'm an Applications Engineer at Cypress Semiconductor. I work in the PSOC group. Today I'm going to be demonstrating to you how you can use PSOC 5LP to do an analog filter that doesn't require any CPU intervention. To showcase this project, I'm going to be using the CY8C Kit 050. I just chose this board because it was the first thing I found on my desk. You can do this project with any kit or any PSOC 5 that you have on hand. And I'm also going to be using one of the example projects that are found with inside of PSOC Creator. We're going to be modifying that example project so that it doesn't have to use the CPU. So let's get started. So first, let's go to PSOC Creator. And let's go and open a new project. But we're going to do an example project this time. So we're going to click on Example Projects. And I'm going to look for one that works with PSOC 5LP. And I'm also going to search for filter, because we want to do a filter. So we have several filter things we can choose here. I'm going to choose filter ADC VDAC. And I'm going to create a new workspace for this. And I'm just going to put it on my desktop. All right, so when the project opens, you get a PDF that gives you a data sheet of how this project works. So we can scroll through this PDF to figure out how we can use this project. But for now, we're just going to go straight to the project and start modifying it. So here's our project schematic. This shows you what's going on. So we have an ADC that reads in a voltage. And then a DMA transfers that voltage to a filter. And then we have an interrupt, which transfers the filtered value to a VDAC. And then that goes out to a pin. So as I said in the beginning, we want to do this without the CPU. So we need to get rid of this interrupt and replace it with something that doesn't use the CPU. So we're going to delete the interrupt. And we're going to open up the filter. And inside the filter customizer, you'll see how this filter works. You'll see that it's set up for a cutoff of 6 kilohertz. It's an FIR low pass. You can see the Bode plot over here of how it's going to work. You can also see that we have the ability to use a DMA request. So that's how we're going to do this without using the CPU is we're going to use another DMA channel here. So I'm going to check DMA request, hit apply, click OK. And as you can see, there's a new DMA request output. So I'm going to move this VDAC just to give myself a little bit more room. And I'm going to grab a DMA from the component catalog, drag that onto my schematic, make sure I enable the hardware request. We'll just set it for derived, and we'll connect it up. Now that we have the DMA placed, we're going to generate code for running that DMA. PSOC Creator provides a wizard that does all of the code for you, so we're going to use that wizard. To access the wizard, you go to Tools, DMA Wizard, you select the project we're running, and then you find the DMA component you want to configure, click Next, and then you got the source, so our source is from the filter, and the destination is going to be the VDAC. And then we go to Next, and we're only transferring one byte, and we want this to run over and over again. So the next TD is zero. So this means when it finishes, it goes back to itself and just runs over and over again. I say next, I get a bunch of code that I can copy into my project. So I'm going to copy that and say finish. So now if we go to main, we can look at all of the code that's in here. And I'll explain some of it in a little bit. But if we go down to the bottom, we see that there's a DMA config. That was for DMA channel one. So we're going to create a new function called DMA underscore one config. And inside of that, we're going to copy the code that we got from the DMA wizard. OK, so we need to create a function prototype for this at the top. All right, so now we have the code pasted in to run the DMA. So let's go through this code a little bit just so you understand what's going on. Uh, this interrupt, that's how the values were transferred before from the filter to the DAC. We don't need this anymore, so I'm going to delete this. In main, we start the ADC interrupt. We start the interrupt to transfer data from the filter to the DAC, which we got rid of, so we're going to delete that. We start the ADC. We start converting the ADC. We start some other components. Then we run the DMA config, and we're also going to run DMA underscore one config. Then we enable interrupts, and then our main loop is doing absolutely nothing. So the CPU is not running after we have everything configured. The last step that we need to do is we need to go and look at the DMA configuration. 
So if you'll notice, in the DMA configuration where we're transferring from the ADC to the filter, if you look at this line of code right here, you'll see we're going from the ADC to the filter's stage AH. So the filter has 24 bits, so there are three bytes you can write into. There's the low byte, the mid byte, and the high byte. So the ADC is writing into the high byte. So when we transfer data out of the filter, we also need to transfer it out of the high byte. So in here you can see I go from the filter to the DAC and it doesn't have the high byte, so I'm just gonna put an H here to do the high byte. And at this point, my code is finished, so I'm going to save it and I'm gonna build it. Now once this code finishes building, what you'll see on the scope here is on the yellow line, we have the input from our function generator and then the blue line is the output of the VDAC. And then as I adjust this here, you'll see that the VDAC voltage will go down as I get close to six kilohertz. And then what we're gonna do after we finish this is we're gonna look at what power is consumed by this board and we're gonna go and modify the project to turn off the CPU to see what kind of power savings we have. All right, so right now I have the function generator at one kilohertz and you can see that the output is tracking the input nicely. And I'm going to increase it to two, three, four, five, you can see it went down a little bit, six, so the output went down a little more because that's where our filter cutoff was. We go to seven, eight, there's not really a whole lot going on there. So our filter is working exactly how it should and we're not using the CPU at all right now. So if we go back, and you'll also notice that we're drawing about 19 milliamps. So now we need to go back to our main code and we're gonna put the CPU to sleep. In PSOC 5LP we call this alternate active mode. So if I go back to main, I'm going to call the function to put us in alternate active mode. So I already have this in my clipboard so I don't mess it up as I'm typing, so I'm going to paste it in. And the function is called CYPM alt active. Uh, we have the sleep time of none. This means it's going to sleep forever. And right now I have it set to wake up on a PQ or a port interrupt that happens. I don't have any port interrupts configured, so this thing should just stay in alt active mode forever. But if you wanted to, you can configure a pin when you press the button to wake it up out of alternate active. So I'm going to save this, I'm going to program it. And what we should see after we program this is we should see the same results on the oscilloscope output, but we should see lower current on the multimeter. So if you look right away, now we're at 14 milliamps, whereas before we were at 19. So we saved about five milliamps of current. And if you look at the oscilloscope, we're still tracking the input. I'm at five kilohertz right now, six, seven, the output goes away. So right now I have my filter working completely without the CPU even on. This is a very powerful feature of PSOC 5 LP in that you can do all kinds of hardware blocks without having the CPU run. This allows you to either save power in this case, or if you wanted to do other more important functions in the CPU, you can use a CPU for that, or maybe even less important functions. So hopefully this inspires you to want to use PSOC 5 LP in your designs. Thanks for watching this video, and have a great day.